I think IRC covers like that are the new trend, because I've reviewed a lot of albums and tapes that have a very similar look. What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're an indie artist looking for an album review and some promo, you can hit up Luke at RedMatterSite.com. And what I have for you boys and girls today is an indie review for KPW's album Black The Default. Now KPW has roots in Ghana and currently resides in Minnesota, but he grew up in Northern Virginia and he actually produces all of his own music. So to check his music out and to see his full bio and learn more about him, just check the information posted in the box underneath this video. Now the song The Driven Youth starts the album off and this one has some production that kind of reminds me of Adrian Young's work, which is obviously a good thing. On this one, he's spitting a little bit about racism, and he brings up how people in power, like say, even Obama, have to deal with racism, which is pretty crazy when you consider that he's the president, and he still has to put up with that shit being at such a high point. But, like we all know, when you're black or a minority, it doesn't matter how much power you have, how powerful you are, and who you are, people are going to hate on you if they're racist, because that's just what they do. And this type of content is all over this album, because in KP's own words, this album is all about black excellence, pride, resilience, and strength. On No PTI, he questions how MLK might react to some of his contemporaries spouting off, kind of like Robert Freeman from the Boondocks. And he also comments on how the rich get richer, which is not news, because that's how it's been working for a long time, and it keeps going that way. And then, on the song Quota for the Casualty, he touches on police brutality and violence, and he looks at how they tend to get away with it all, no matter what you do. So sometimes, you might be in a hard spot where you don't know how to react to police officers, because even when people comply and do the right thing, sometimes they're still getting murdered. We've seen it all the time in 2015, even before that, and unfortunately, I'm sure we're going to see more of these stories and videos moving forward, because U.S. police are nuts. Now the beat on Quota for the Casualties is a little bit experimental and jumbled, so I'm not sure if everyone's going to like that one. I found it to be a little bit grating to the ears myself. But there are some better beats on here for sure. The song Bassett Banger has a type of black exploitation sound to it, and has KPW spitting about how he met Angela Bassett when he was 15, and she looks good still by the way, I gotta say. Whenever I see her on American Horror Story, I know she's older, but she looks alright man, she's kind of a mill for her. She might be a gilf by now man. And then on Organized Tragedy, we get some very soft piano production, but there's no bars on this one, it's just a news report. But if you're looking for some of the best bars on this album, they actually come from Mike Dreams on the song Hustling Metric. He just has a very brash and confident style, and I think he sounds a little bit more polished than KPW does overall. And I gotta say, if you're gonna enjoy this album, you're probably gonna need a little bit of patience, because there's a lot of complex lyricism, deep philosophies, big words, abstraction, all that type of stuff. So if you're not the type of person who likes to decipher and listen multiple, multiple times to take things in, like if you like the more straightforward approach, you might find that KPW kind of takes a long way to get to his point. Not to say that's a bad thing, because, you know, there's some intellectual content on here, but I think if he maybe made his lyrics a little bit more clear and concise, it would be much more accessible to other people. And I'm not suggesting that he change his style. I'm just putting that out there, because that's something that I thought as I listened through this album multiple times. But I do think he has a cool vocal style and delivery, and he actually reminds me a little bit of K. Reno, so that's a good thing for sure. K. Reno's not whack, so... That's a good look. But overall, I gotta give this one a 2.5 out of 5. Like I said, I think his lyricism could be a bit more clear, concise, and to the point. And I also think the beats could use some tightening up, even though there are some good sounds on here. And the mixing and mastering needs some work as well. So 2.5 out of 5 seems fair, but there are definitely some positives here to be worked on. But that's just what I thought about this one. You guys check it out for yourself and let me know in the comments section what you think. And make sure you do all that good YouTube and social media stuff, man. Where you like my videos, you share them, you follow me on Twitter, you retweet the videos, and you especially subscribe to my channel. We're over 10k now, so get your FAQ questions in, because I will be doing another one of those. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel, everybody. I'll see you next time.